Hi guys, Uber. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, you know who it is. And uh, I got to come on here and address a lot of discussions about me that have been happening over the past couple of weeks. A lot of rumors have been spreading across the internet, as some of you guys may know. Those of you who have been following uh, and kind of uh, taking in the Fantano lore, uh, some of which has been uh, getting uh, discussed very intensely on the subreddit. I do try to be um, a private person. I do try to keep my personal life offline because I, I don't make that uh, uh, thing so much. I don't feel like it's uh, most people's business. But, uh, you know, cat's out of the bag, so I might as well come out here and address it and essentially tell you guys that, yes, what you have heard, what you have read on the internet, it's true. I enjoyed the Hudson Mohawk song, Sea Bat. I mean, yeah, yeah, Hudson Mohawk, Sea Bat, off of his uh, Satin Panthers EP. I enjoyed it and uh, had a really good time listening to it, especially when I reviewed it. Now, I mean, <laughs> please, please give me a break here. Please be understanding. This was over 10 years ago that I did this. I know there's a lot of people out there who are talking about this Hudson Mohawk song right now because of uh, a viral Reddit post where a user describes this song as uh, being included in his, um, you know, playlist oh, wow. where he would have. That's banging. intimate moments with his now ex. Uh, well, anyway, yes, this Hudson Mohawk song that is over 10 years old at this point uh, was included in this post. And uh, as a result of that, it has gained this uh, new breath of virality on the internet, which is a uh, kind of odd and ironic timing considering Hudson Mohawk just dropped <laughs> a brand new record. Cry Sugar is the title of it. It's it's quite decent. There are some good tracks on there. I recommend, uh, you know, hitting it up for yourself and seeing what it's got to offer. It's kind of a mixed bag. But uh, yes, in the wake of this song going viral, a couple things have happened. Uh, first, let me address the fact that uh, uh, it's kind of caused some listeners and fans of mine to dig up my old review of the Hudson Mohawk EP that the song comes from and uh, look at my specific comments in regards to Seabat, which we will, uh, you know, splice into this video now. Even on my favorite track on here, Seabat, which kind of floats in elegantly on this chariot of epic synthesized strings and horns just for 20 seconds before this dude kind of takes the track off-roading through the mud. This filthy, heavy, dirty beat comes in with these weeping synthesizers hitting the tempo kind of awkwardly. It actually kind of reminds me of the beat in Lil Wayne's A Millie and is something I could totally see Little B spitting on if you're watching this video. Do what you can to contact him. Get him to spit on this. Sea bat please. So yes, I had a lot of positive things to say about the song at the time. And uh, truth be told, 
I still feel that way about the song pretty much. However, I do yeah, wish I great. go back and prevent my comments about uh, wishing that Lil B could rap on the song. I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I, I was so freaking cringe. But uh, yeah, my comments were what my comments were. And uh, I still think the song is a banger. It's a great track. At the time, I was under the impression that uh, what I was hearing in that melody was some kind of synth when in fact it does sound more like a door creaking being sampled. But either way, I love that melody. I think it's really funny. Love the banger beat. Love the needlessly like epic glamorous intro that uh, just uh, just kicks off this uh, very zany banger. For somebody who's been listening to Hudson Mohawk for years, this is kind of his M.O. Tracks that hit hard have a lot of punch, a lot of personality, but simultaneously have almost a tongue in cheek flair to them, a quirk, uh, maybe almost like a sense of humor, which I think you also see play out when Hudson Mohawk is uh, kind of doing his thing online because he does uh, tend to be a bit of a memer. He uh, likes and shares a lot of very hilarious and left field and odd social media posts, be it on Twitter or especially Instagram. And yeah, I think the song goes hard. I think the song is fire. But what's funny is that in the wake of this uh, Reddit post going viral, um, a, a, a lot of opinions are not really cutting in that direction, which is uh, really odd in my opinion, and I think says a lot about how the way we're introduced to music has such a pivotal impact on the way that we perceive it and enjoy it. Because like how many people out of the context of this Reddit post, if they had stumbled across this track, uh, might have thought it's kind of fun or weird or danceable, kind of funny, just kind of a zany trap track with a weird melody. I mean, certainly there were people who uh, enjoyed this track publicly post the release of this EP. It didn't get too bad reviews. Uh, also ended up in a pretty iconic scene in the TV show Workaholics, uh, which is also sort of a reference point for a lot of people who were hearing this song go viral uh, with this Reddit post. Like, well, I thought this was like, like the Workaholics track. So, I mean, certainly there's been enough examples of people enjoying this song over the years but uh, now as a result of this reddit post this track has gotten more attention than it ever has and it's quickly become uh, Hudson Mohawk's uh, one of his most if not his most viral song ever like I was saying it's like people who are reacting to this song for the first time as a result of this reddit post aren't able to separate it from the reddit post because I've seen a lot of negative reactions saying that the track is trash anybody who enjoys it is an idiot must, must be a total, total moron who the hell is this crazy hudson mohawk guy I, sounds like he's like, you know, some loser teenager making a crappy low grade trap song in Fruity Loops. When in fact, Hudson Mohawk is a great, talented, versatile producer who has done uh, incredible work for the likes of Kanye West, Drake, tons of other huge artists out there. He has uh, some real cred in the game when it comes to production chops. So if you've not heard this man's name before, uh, that's really kind of your own fault. The pointer contrast I'm essentially trying to highlight here is that on the internet as of late, especially through TikTok, we've seen a lot of random tracks, especially older ones, go crazy viral. Wait, who the fuck did this guy work with? Hold on. What what are his credentials? Jesus fuck. Take tons of other huge artists out there. He has uh, some real cred in the game when it comes to production chops. So if you've not heard this man's name before, uh, that's really kind of your own fault. The pointer contrast I'm essentially trying to highlight here is that on the internet as of late, especially through TikTok, we've seen a lot of random tracks, especially older ones, go crazy viral.
viral, uh, find a new audience of people who like really appreciate the song that uh, without the internet, without TikTok, we wouldn't have uh, ever expected them to hear it. However, up until this point, um, in all these instances that uh, crop up at the top of my head, uh, artists like Fleetwood Mac going crazy viral on TikTok, uh, Kate Bush recently as well, though that also has a lot to do with the Stranger Things tie-in. In a lot of these new instances, uh, the reception has been really positive. However, in the case of Seabat, uh, the attention has been very negative toward the song. I mean, look, the, the only sin the song committed was being placed onto a sex playlist by this guy. And uh, look, it's a great fucking song. It's just not a great song for fucking. That's all. If we could listen to this track and enjoy it outside of the context of any kind of, you know, a sexual interaction, <laughs> I think we can uh, begin to appreciate it for what it really is. Because uh, look, Hudson Mohawk, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he made the track like, you know, with the intention that, yeah, this one's for the bedroom. Seabat is a heavy ass shaker, but it's far too weird and, and silly sounding to be played on commercial radio or, you know, be a certified club hit. And that kind of puts Hudson Mohawk in a weird place. Put some respect on Hudson Mohawk's name. Listen to his other tracks, if you so wish. Uh, try out his new record, Cry Sugar. Just did a review of it. Hear it for yourself. Form your own opinions. And as always, let me know what you guys think of this track down in the comments. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? Um, you're the best. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, this is Seabat of Forever. Well, okay. <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. Oh, there's no audio. Fuck.
My story. Use the powers I gave you. Yes. Yes, it's happening. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah, that's hype. <laughs> You should see how tall they're making the, the players these days. Some require two knees per leg. weird but i like it dude that guy laying pipe that guy laying pipe to to the other song best thing that can happen to this fucking group i hey you gained another fan <laughs> <laughs> 